say, first of all, I'm just going to do a new rule, right? So he's going to overrule it because he feels like he's done. But he's really saying, who are you to have a new rule? <coughs> who are you to have a rule? And who am I supposed to tell them to have a rule? And then I'm just going to do it. And then I am always ready, right now, every moment, whatever you need me to be, I am. I am Jehovah Rapha. I am Jehovah Shalom. I am Jehovah Shalom, the place to die. I am whatever you need, whenever you need it. I am provision. I am safety. I am security. I am preserving. I am food. I am water. I am the increase. I am the light. I am the way. I am the truth. He is everything. Everything. And I am just going to do it. And I'm just going to do it. Amen. Praise God. Should I start doing the announcement? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. John, you're you John's you guys alright if we don't run with words tonight? Just, just worship the Lord. We're short on uh, worship team people and, and we're click a list. We're just gonna love on the Lord. I know John John Waltz tried to chase us one time and own off this way down a bunny trail with the Lord and I had them all balled up. Hallelujah. Right? I won't do it to you again, John, I promise. We will dance, we will dance for your glory. We will dance, we will dance for your glory. We will dance for your glory.
stay in history. Let this beating you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. Let me cross the empty grave. of your presence, Lord. Give the bride, Lord, the hunger for your presence, Lord. 
Not for the hunger of religion, Lord, or doctrine, Lord, or man's beliefs, but for the presence, for the glory of your presence, Lord. We cast all things that we have learned that are not from you, Lord, and we focus on who you are, Jesus, 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 come.
this, Lord. To know who Jesus is, and I know a lot of times that I say I know who Jesus is, and, and I can go to his word and, and see it over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. So um, this isn't nothing new, but um, there was something that um, John said earlier um, that it was like a, 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 a lightning bolt that just hit me that, okay, all right, <laughs> um, you know, in preparation of of things that we do, um, I, my mind is racing right now, which is a good thing. You probably don't think so, but it is for me. Um, but um, I, I'm not going to take a whole lot of time because um, I, like Suzanne, I, I tried to condense um, what I, I was, God had led me in um, earlier this week, and uh, <laughs> I was working on my ninth page. But in, in, in translation, as far as that comes across in speaking, um, you know, that could be a half hour or it could be an hour and a half. It just depends on how many different directions they decide to go off on. <laughs> because when you're in the Word, there are a lot of different directions you can go off on. But the good thing about it is, is that it all leads back to Jesus. Amen? Amen? It truly does. Because I can show you from Genesis to Revelation that Jesus Christ is, was, always will be from the beginning to the end. The Alpha, the beginning, the Omega, the end. And... For us, this end that a lot of people think about and talk about is the end of the world. Well, the end of the world isn't even the beginning. It's just like scratching, I don't even know. But um, eternity is, there ain't one of us that can nail down and give me a good definition of what eternity is. I mean, eternity is eternity. And I, you know, after you think about it for a while, you just have to stop because it's like I, I can't think into eternity. And um, the provisions that God has given to me sometimes in the upper cranial cavity, you know, aren't quite as deep as others. So, you know, praise God for it. But um, um, like I said, it was something John said earlier, and I just, I, I feel led with this. And um, to know exactly who Jesus Christ is, um, I know there's a lot of times, and not so much for everybody here, but to say that, Jesus Christ is absolutely 100% God, is absolutely truth. And I can prove that to you by the word of God. Not that that's my mission, but to prove to you only through the word. And what the word says to me should say the same to every one of us, correct? And um, let's see, it's either 1 Peter, 2 Peter, um, 2 and something, I can't remember now, but in there where it says there is no private interpretation of the scripture. In a meeting, it says the same thing to you as it does to me, even though religions of the world will take, and not just religions, people will take scripture and kind of make it fit and mold to what they want it to fit. Does that change what the word says? Absolutely not. It doesn't change it. It might change it for them in a moment and space of time, but it doesn't change the fact of what the word says. So, um, Go to John chapter 1 and um, uh, put your thumb there. 
uh, Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and you'll have to bear with me because this is a foreign, foreign Bible to me. Not that the books have been changed around or anything, but <laughs> uh, and then go to uh, put your thumb in um, uh, Isaiah, the ninth chapter, and. Yeah, I could have your thumb in all kinds of spots here, but I'm only going to pick a few, okay? You only have? Are they opposable? <laughs> That's right. Okay, so, um, okay, so um, let's see. Uh, I don't want to get too bombarded here. Okay, so in Isaiah. And it, there's a lot that leads up to this one scripture because I'm going to pull out um, certain scripture. But, um, uh, keep, so keep your thumb here. But if you read, uh, um, let's see, uh, start in verse 4. Cha uh, chapter 9, Isaiah, verse 4. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warriors with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be burning, uh, this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Okay? So, who is, who is that talking about? How do you know that? Huh? Right. So, so I'm pulling that scripture out of, and, and I started at verse 4, but as you read the book of Isaiah going up to that point, it's leading up to the point to say at that spot. And then as you read further, it, even, it, it declares it even further and deeper. But, so, um, we can all remember that one, right? So, um, that's uh, um, uh, Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born. So, um, you got your thumb in uh, St. John. So, uh, Matthew, uh, let's see, one, and keep your thumb in John. Matthew, the first chapter. <clears throat> uh, let's see. There's a lot of thought, I can't remember. Uh, okay. So um, start at, um, let's start at 21. And again, you read the whole chapters and everything, but it says this, uh, Matthew 1, 21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and that thou shalt call his name, what? For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name, what? Okay, now here it says what? Emmanuel, which being interpreted is what? So the interpretation of the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, is God with us, right? So there should be no confusion even with that. So now go to uh, the book of John, uh, the first chapter, and we'll start at verse 1. And I know I've told this story probably a hundred times, and you're probably sick of it, but every time I read this, because I've done this with several different churches and trying out, trying out because they're looking for, for a pastor. This was years ago. But when you read from the book, I mean verbatim, and I don't care what version you have, I'll read that version if you want me to. But it all says the same thing. So as I'm you reading this, I'm not trying to coax something out of you. I want you to tell me because if, if I'm wrong, uh, Romans 3 and 4, let the word of God be true, every man a liar. Well, does that mean every man's a liar? Not necessarily, but we sure could be. So the point is, is don't just believe what someone tells you. Prove it by what? Word. The word. That's the only proof we have. End of the story. So as I'm reading this, um, this was after a Sunday of, of preaching, uh, probably two Sundays, 
they were, I mean, they stopped me. They wanted me to be the pastor. Now, they don't know me from Adam other than someone referenced me to come and preach for them because they were without a pastor. Oh, they just loved me. And I said, well, we need to have a Bible study. And this is right where I went. I said, because they gave me their bylaws, okay? So their religious bylaws, I get that, that well, it was actually about that long. And uh, I'm not kidding. I mean, it was, it was huge. And it's like, I, I don't know about this. And so that's what prompted me to, I'm not convinced that these folks really know who Jesus is. So I said, we should have a Bible study. So let's do that. Let's, let's have some Wednesdays. Let's get some Wednesdays on our belt. I'll keep coming on Sunday. And then, you know, uh, we'll talk then. Because um, I, I could be a wolf in sheep's clothing, come and shred you people to pieces. You don't know that. I've come twice. So anyway, okay, yeah, that sounds great. So here's where I started. And as I said to them, I'll say to you. So as I'm reading this, I want you to read this, and you tell me what, it, what it's saying. And hopefully, and now there was a lot of different answers. Well, actually, there wasn't. The ones that weren't sure just sat there and wouldn't say anything. And they were waiting for them to someone say Jesus or God. or you know. So you got a couple of those. But in their minds, they think there's a difference between Jesus and God. I understand. Who is Jesus? Jesus is God's only begotten son, right? So in here, you're going to find out exactly what it is. Because in Isaiah, what did it say? The mighty God, the everlasting Father, right? Absolutely. So this all adds up to the same one irrefutable answer, or it doesn't. So in the beginning was the Word. The Word is what? I'll also show you, well, well, we'll just, we'll read on. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Who's Him? The Absolutely. Who else? God, Absolutely. So, as we progress through this, right now, all I can gather from it is, in the beginning was the Word. Okay, so, how did God create? He spoke it into existence. So the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So now we're talking about God and at least some other, one other thing, person, something else besides God, right? That's the inference. The same, what's the same? The same what was in the beginning with God? The Word, okay. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So right now, all I'm gathering is, is that, okay, well, all things were made by him, God, and without him, God, was not anything made that was made. In him was life. Who? Who's him? Okay, God. In God was life, and the life was the light of men. Hmm. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of that light. Notice the light is now uh, capitalized. Now, one could argue the point, well, King James and his boys, when they translate it, they decided to do that. Okay, fine, but it sure fits uh, uh, with what I'm reading here. Hmm, because now I have to wonder, what is, okay, so the light is capitalized. So there's something going on here. That all men through him might believe. He was not that light. Who was not that light? John. But was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lights every man that comes into the world. He was in the world. Who was in the world? How do you know that? It hasn't said Jesus yet. Uh-huh. Well, okay, but if I say, well, Jesus is the Word, how do you know he's the Word? Absolutely. Um Keep your finger there. So let's see. Revelation um, 19. Let's see. Sharing both small grade. Sorry, this is uh, somewhat off the cuff. I'm I'm trying to remember. Okay, so uh, yeah, um, Revelation. Keep your finger there in, in John 19. Revelation 19. Um, Let's uh, start with, uh, da, 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 da. oh, mm, how about, uh, sorry, um, 10, and I felt, and I fell at his feet to worship him, 
And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Awesome. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called what? Who? Who? Exactly. And who's the word of God? Okay, so I picked a few scriptures out there. When you read the entire chapter, the context of what's going on, you'll exactly know, so I'm not making this up. So if you drop down to 16, and he has on his vesture uh, and his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Awesome. Go back to St. John. So, hopefully, without any doubt in, in your mind whatsoever, when you go back to verse 1 in St. John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So it says this, in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Am I lying? Am I trying to make something up? Several different references here clearly from the word of God, say that Jesus Christ is definitely God. Okay, so it's like with us. We hear this all the time about, okay, you see me right here. You see me, Mark, right? My face, my chubby cheeks, and, and the whole bit, right? You see me. Do you see my spirit? Nope. Now, in a sense, you do by the things I may say, may not say, the things I do, maybe not do. Um, but then... You're, you're still judging and not judging in the sense that the world judges. I'm saying you're, you're making a, uh, um, uh, 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 assumption. Thank you. Thank you. See, this is class participation too. So you're making an assumption, but it's still based off of what you see. You see this. This is not who I am. Absolutely not who I am. You see this. And I see this when I look in the mirror, but do I see do I see me or do I see what God sees? Because God does not see this. Once you said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my Savior, he did such. He doesn't see you anymore, John. He sees John, the man in the spirit, the spiritual man, the one that's going to live forever, that's going to endure eternity with Christ. That's who he sees. So in, in a similar sense, okay, so in the beginning was the word, Jesus, okay, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Um, I understand that um, Jesus was born, obviously, like all of us, and what's the point to that? Absolutely. And he had to shed blood in order for us to be forgiven in order for us to have an, an opportunity, a chance to um, be uh, rid of the sin that was in our life once and for all. Amen? That's a, that's a whole... That's, then there's an, at least four more messages right there. Okay, so, um, again, in the beginning was Jesus. And I, I go, I mean... Read, uh, um, okay, that, I don't want to give too many scriptures. Um, okay, so in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, without him was not anything made. Um, if someone could find uh, the scripture of uh, Jesus and the worlds were framed by him, Philippians, Colossians, uh, Hebrews, okay. Somebody find that, will you? Okay, so uh, we know John came in. Uh, God sent John uh, to bear witness of Jesus, the light, right? The light of all men, to bear witness of that light. That light was the true light, which lights every man that comes into the world. Now, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. What a conundrum. The world, the very world that he framed, that he created, 
yet people refuse, I mean, boldface refuse to acknowledge, just let alone him, let alone acknowledge that he created the entire, everything that we, we know to be true, everything that we can see with our eyes, and then beyond which we can't see with, without the Hubble telescope, amen? And it says he came unto his own, and his own received him not. So further credence, because when Jesus came in, did they receive him? Oh, oh Jesus, Lord God, our Savior. No. They crucified him. Crucify him! So, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become... <laughs> the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Whose name? Which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Verse 14, and the word was made flesh. Now we determined absolutely beyond a doubt that the word is Jesus, amen? So, Jesus was made flesh. He dwelt among us. We beheld his glory. The glory is of only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spoke of. He that comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And for in his fullness have, we, have all we received. And I love that. Grace for grace. Grace for grace. If you're wondering if grace is real... I just, sometimes I wish it would, it, it, <laughs> it would like have in parentheses hyper grace. Uh, that would be awesome. That would totally flip some people out. But grace is extremely hyper. It's not even hyper. What's beyond hyper? I don't know. But thank God for it because without it, we, none of us would have a chance. Plain and simple. It's okay, there's another six messages. Right? Okay, so, uh, and of his fullness all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by who? Right. There it is. Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. So, in us, do you see Jesus right here? No, but if you look a little deeper... Again, hopefully, in certain things that this glob of flesh does or doesn't do or, you know, whatever. We determine a lot of the things that we, that we see to be, um, that that's what makes them who they are, period, just by what I see. And, you know, sometimes it's hard because, you know, we, we hear... Paul, we read where Paul says to not walk in the flesh, but walk in the spirit. Well, dude, I don't have a choice. I, you know, here's me, I'm walking, I'm in my flesh. But the more that we get into this mindset, if we, we just got to know who Jesus is, because we talk about this, we hear it preached all the time. I'm, we're blessed because we have people here that, that God uses and will get up and use their voice and share with us, and it's awesome. I'm still rolling over on Sunday. That was, that was very, very cool. Um, but and, and so furthermore, then, we have the opportunity because we have a pastor who I really believe is after God's own heart and, and sharing the word and is not afraid to um, <laughs> sometimes go where no man has gone before as far as, you know, the word is concerned. But, you know, I, I've said it many times. I, I was bound and determined to, um, to help this poor guy out because, you know, he just, he needs some help. And uh, uh, it's, just, it's just awesome how God works. So um, uh, if, um, for instance, the I am. Okay, so when God spoke, to Moses in the burning bush. Suzanne referenced earlier, right? Um, where's that at? Genesis. Uh, all right, whatever it is. But um, So when, when God was speaking to Moses, and he told him after Moses, just like Suzanne said, well, who, who do I, who, who do I, Exodus, okay. So 
he says, just tell them that um, I am sent you. Oh, can you imagine? Oh, okay, sure. I'll tell everybody that I am sent me. And uh, um, so if you look in, uh, let's see, John, um, somebody help me out here if you can. Uh, it's later, let's see, uh, where Jesus tells them that he's the I am. What I'm trying to show to you is that, that when God, when Jesus came on the scene, he absolutely flipped the Jews out of their ever-loving mind. Just flipped them out and called them, I mean, and Jesus called him out. I mean, um, let's see. Uh, let me let me find. Uh, yeah, I don't have my uh, my one Bible, but um, uh, anybody finds it, shout out. Uh, Um, chapter 8. Oh, so keep... Okay, all right. So, um, read, John, read yours. Very good. I like it. So uh, in chapter 8 of John, um, they're having a, uh, a rather healthy debate. Uh, Jesus is with the Jews. They're wanting to just lay him out right then and there. And uh, he goes through, um, uh, if you go to verse um, 54, uh, start at uh, 52. They s- then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead. He was just talking about Abraham. Who is your father? If Abraham was your father, you know who I mean. And so he's going on and he says, uh, um, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Who makest thou thyself? Jesus says, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have known him, but I know him. You have not known him, but I have known him. But I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art, thou art not fifty years old, and thou hast seen Abraham? And Jesus says what? I am. Absolutely. So it from Old Testament back to New Testament, back to Old Testament. Um, and again, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is in the New Testament as far as the word is concerned, but Jesus is still on the scene. He is the New Testament, right? So... But when Jesus is still on the scene speaking to these people, this is Old Testament time. They're still believing the Old Testament, and that in part is why they were having such a hard time believing that God was standing right there in front of them. And just like Pilate said, he goes, he says, I, can, I have the power to set you free right now. I mean, so, uh, you know, what is truth? And it's like truth is standing right there in front of him. Right there. So, you know, over and over and over again, in the Word, um, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's, um, it's, it's just like grace. The more, if you pick something out and study it, and really study it, and, I mean, you can start from Genesis and cover it all the way through the Bible, but there's absolutely no doubt, because it's just like um, uh, when... Uh, when Jesus was still with him, he told him, he said, okay, here's what, you, here's what I want you to do. 
I want you to go. I want you to go to Jerusalem, wait there. And then power is going to come unto you from on high. And at that point, then you will have the power to go out and do what? Go into all nations, teaching them, preaching to them, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Who's the Father? It's God, too. So I'm not confused. But he says he's the Father. I and the Father are what? Not five, not ten, not separate. We are one. So the Father, okay, who's the Son? And this is uh, when I was doing this as a church. Jesus! Everybody was happy that they knew who the Son was. But they were saying, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost. Who's the Holy Ghost? Right. Whatever. Call him what you want. But I know what it says this is that every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. If we don't know that Jesus Christ, there is so much behind, in front of, beside it. But there's, there's I mean, I don't want to overdo it, but at the same time, we got to have a firm grip on because everything that we, everything that comes forth from this pulpit, who's it about? It's about Jesus. And it's about having a relationship with him and to know that we are going to see him, that he is the one that came and shed his blood. So Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? And uh, he knows they're coming after him, and he's on his face. I mean, he is praying. He's praying so hard that he bleeds, he sweats blood. That's hard. That's an actual medical condition, and, and it's not happened very many times in the history of man. It's almost impossible. But that is a, a sign of stress that I don't think anybody here could endure. So he's praying. He says, Father, I don't want to do this. I, I do not want to do this. I do not want to go through what I'm about to go through. I know what I'm going to go through because I'm God. I understand that. I'm Jesus. But at the same time, Father, take this cup from me. I don't want to do it. Because you, you'll get that argument. But people, well, you're saying Jesus is God. Well, then how, who is he praying to? Himself? In a sense, but just like I have flesh, Jesus had flesh. God had flesh. He created it through a miraculous birth through Mary. Amen? So Jesus' flesh did not want to get beat, did not want to have his guts ripped out of his body so all could see. He didn't want to have a crown of thorns buried into his skull. He didn't want to carry a cross. Then after all that, and I'm you know cutting it short, and then be nailed to a cross, dropped in a hole, pierced. His flesh did not want to do that. Would your flesh want to do that? Absolutely not. But he did it. Nevertheless, not, not me, not, not this flesh, but your will be done. And that's how it was, it was able to take place. So don't think for a minute that Jesus, the man, was confused of who he was, because he wasn't. I mean, so many times. He says, go out and, and, and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So when the, all the, the, uh, the apostles, uh, disciples, went out and baptized them, um, what name did they use when they baptized? I mean, all through Acts. It, uh, the, oh, here's, here's a lot of water. And they baptized him in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Are they confused? I used to be hardcore and say if you didn't get, if you were baptized in the name of the title. Well, what are the titles? His name. <laughs> so, you know, praise God. So, uh, um, um, I, you know, there's uh, uh, just, this is just a smattering of scripture referencing who Jesus Christ is. Jesus was not confused who he was. Paul was not confused who he was. Um, the writers of the rest of the writers of the New Testament, the Old Testament, who are they referencing? Jesus. Jesus is what's made all this possible. Jesus made it possible for a, a drug dealing moron who should have been in prison for 25 years. Uh, to be free from all that nonsense and not even have a, I, I mean, just walked away from it like it never happened. Yeah. Only Jesus can do something like that. Right. Plain and simple. Yeah. So this Jesus that we serve, he is 
humongous. He's huge. He is the all in all. I mean, how many different ways, more ways can we say it? I mean, a bunch. I mean, in all sincerity. But, um, um, I, you know, I just, uh, I hope that, you know, that little bit makes sense. And the more that you read the pages, and like I was going to say earlier, it's just like grace. I can't read, I cannot read the Bible now without seeing Jesus and everything, and I can't read it without seeing grace and everything. Grace and mercy, because without it, we would be most miserable. I mean, wouldn't we? Plain and simple. But the more that we know and understand and realize who this Jesus really is, the more than everything else makes total and complete sense, no matter what subject that we study. Amen? I love the Lord. I'm so glad to know that, um, you know, uh, we have, you know, new birth that's taken place. It's awesome. And, um, you know, I feel like, you know, when something like this takes place, I feel kind of new and birthy again. It's, you know, it's, it's awesome. It, it really is. But um, let's let's just stand. Let's take a minute. Let's just thank him for clarity of of word, clarity of what we can we can read in his word that he's given us, and um, um, you know just love on him for a minute. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. You are so so good to us, Lord God. I thank you for opening eyes and minds and hearts, Lord Jesus, to your word. And that in the newness of what we see, that we can apply it to our life right now in an instant. That that newness be rejoyed. My first love, Lord God, I just thank you, Lord Jesus, for excitement that you give us through your word. The clarity of it, Lord Jesus, to be set free and free indeed. And it's only through Jesus. Amen. Lord, we thank you tonight. We praise you. We glorify you. And uh, we just look forward to more and more and more and more from you each and every day. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody say amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I told you it wouldn't be long.